What is going on guys? It is your boy Super Saiyan Main Train back again with another YouTube video. I think I'm gonna shut my door. <laughs> Don't know if I want people listening. Uh, piece of cake. Boom. Cowabunga. Get this focused. So the video topic today is going to be a little bit heavier. I don't usually, um, I like to keep the channel nice and light and talk about things that I think are funny or different things going on in my life, but um, I've never really completely gone over my eating disorder that I had. To be completely blunt, I struggled really bad with anorexia. And it's something that a lot of people don't like to talk about, especially within the running community, and I think that's why I want to touch up on it. So um, I, I want to begin with my personal story, how it all began, um, and how I ended up kicking the habit. So it all started um, when I came to St. John's University. I, I've always been built as a bigger guy. Uh, I'll, I'll drop a picture here to show you some of my high school um, running pictures. I've weighed as much as 180 to 185 pounds in high school, and I never really thought much of it. Uh, I just ate till I was, I was full, um, I'd get hungry and I'd eat again. And just because of genetics or whatever, uh, I lifted quite a bit in high school. I ended up being a bigger kid. I had pretty thick legs, little barrel chested, thick shoulders. Um, and it was just the way it was. And I went over to St. Cloud State and that was my first year of college. And um, I kept running. I started running a little more. I only ever ran about 25 miles a week in high school. But at St. Cloud, uh, I got my mileage up, I think at the highest, about 60 to 65 miles. And just because of that, I, I lost a little bit of weight, got down to 160 to 165. And I didn't think much of it. People noticed, but I was still eating until I was full and didn't think I had a problem at all. And uh, I transferred over to St. John's when St. Cloud cut their program. And that's when I started to run into issues. When I came into St. John's my first year, I had a really good summer and I got hurt about three weeks out from the season. And because of that, I couldn't run. I had plantar fasciitis pretty bad. Uh, and because of that, I couldn't run. And I put on a little bit of weight. I think at the skinniest, I was 155 pounds that summer. I got up to 70, 80 miles a week a couple times. Um, and I put on weight super fast. And I'm not sure if it was because I was eating more than I should have been. My metabolism just slowed down as I aged. Uh, but I noticed it and I didn't like it very much. Um, I didn't like the fact that I felt a little heavier walking around. When I started running again, um, when I came back to St. John's, I, I noticed instantly that I was, I was slower. My easy days were much slower and running the same effort. Um, and that bothered me. So the first couple races, Running in the Johnny Blue, I didn't perform very well. Um, I think I was 10th, 11th, 12th on the team, something like that. Getting beat by guys on the team. I don't have they had good races, but uh, that I should have been in front of for sure. And correspondingly, I just thought to myself, man, I need to figure out a way to, to get back to where I was. So my first thought was, you know, when I was running pretty fast this summer, I weighed about 155 pounds. So. Maybe I just need to lose some weight. At the beginning of my first year at St. John's, I uh, at the beginning of the season was about 165 pounds. And I'll try and show you some pictures through, going throughout the season so you can kind of see what's happening. Um, but I slowly but surely, I don't, I don't think I had a problem here yet um, with the eating habits, but I, I began to kind of restrict my caloric intake a little bit. And I bet you every week I was dropping about two pounds, um, one to two pounds. And by lacrosse, which is the second to last, it's it's the meet before conference, two weeks out, um, I had a pretty good race. I think I was third or fourth on the team. Um, things were starting to come together. And at that point, I was starting to get skinny again, starting to feel light on my feet. Um, and I thought to myself, dang, there's a correlation here. There's there's a relationship between being thin, being lean, and being fast. Um, whether that means muscle mass or fat mass, um, weight is still weight. Um, and my thought process was, well, if I can, if I can keep losing weight and getting faster, then why not? So I, uh, I dropped a couple more pounds, and I think at this point is when I started to kind of struggle a little bit of an eating disorder. Um, so lacrosse, I. Um, I cut back pretty hard on, on food and 
I had a really good Mayak race, a really good conference championship race. Arguably probably the third best race of my life. I placed ninth in the Mayak. Um, and that really, in my head, I think, was the, the nail in the coffin that reinforced this whole thin to win um, anorexic eating behavior that developed. And there were people on the team, specifically the girls team, that had noticed I had lost a lot of weight. And they tried to talk to me and tell me, hey, you, you, you can eat more, you know, you don't have to feel like, I don't know what's driving this. And they didn't really understand them. There's a piece of popcorn on the table. <laughs> they didn't really understand the full extent of um, what I was going through or whatever. And I don't, it wasn't really a, a going through. Like, I, I didn't know I had a problem. I didn't think there was a problem, you know. Um, but people were starting to notice. And I just kind of blew it off because I didn't think that I had an issue. Um, I was like, nah, I'm just fine. I'm running a lot. That's what happens. You get skinnier when you run a lot. So... Um, I had that great race and then Regents came and I had another great race and the season was over and I thought, well shit, I've had it all wrong all these years. If I had been this thin all this time, I could have run, probably could have made state in high school. I probably could have ran faster at St. Cloud. I probably, I, I could have done a million things. So I I beat it into my head that, all right, this is something that has to be a part of my life now as a, as a person who wants to be a successful runner, a successful athlete. To an extent, that was true. Um, there, There is a positive relationship between being skinny and being fast. And people who say otherwise, um, I hate to say they're wrong, but there's, there's scientific proof that says that's true. But the problem here is um, two things. You can, you can run into um, a negative relationship with food. You can start to view food as, as something that that doesn't make your day better, it makes it worse. And as an athlete, you can you can be too skinny. And, and that's the part of the story that I'm coming up to now. So my indoor track season, I, uh, I took two weeks off from running and I came back and my first race back, um, I, I weighed maybe two pounds, three pounds more than I did at the end of the season. I think I was about 155 pounds or so. And I ran an indoor 3K. Um, it, it's an alumni race, so it's just St. John's and some alumni. And I raced against a uh, St. John's alumni named Matt Sherber. And God damn fuck, he just barely, just barely beat me. It, that was probably the, the best kick I've had in an indoor race probably ever. Uh, I ran 903 and just got edged out by an alumni in the 3K. Um, and I thought, yeah, this is it, dude. Like, I've never run this fast as an opener at St. Cloud, I never, I think I never broke 9.10 in the 3K ever. And I opened the season at 9.03, weighing 155 pounds. So I thought, fuck, this is it. I've hit the money. I knew, I know exactly what I need to do. But uh, then I had a little bit of an eye opener. And um, from here, my, my season kind of got dicked a little bit. So my my next race after that was another five. It was a 5K um, at our home meet again. We had another home meet, and I blew up. There's no other way to say it than my body was completely thrashed. And I had taken sufficient rest. Um, I like to think I took two weeks completely off of running, and I felt recovered. But at this point in the season, I felt like I'd been running for a year straight. Like I just had no break. My legs wouldn't move. And when I was running races, when I ran that race, I finished and I wasn't breathing hard, but my legs were thrashed. Like I hit the first mile and I was just coasting and felt super comfortable. And all of a sudden I hit a wall at one mile. And I was like, well, I've never experienced this before. Um, and I didn't really understand why that happened. I thought I just kind of had a bad race. And that continued on into outdoor season. Um, and I think that was the root of, looking back now, the root of my my problems I had that year. So I I developed mono and iron deficiency my first year at St. John's. And I think primarily that has to do with diet and with the fact that I was anorexic. At the time, I was eating, depending on the day, anywhere from 1,000 to at the most 2,000 calories, but I bet you I was averaging about 1,500. I would eat three meals, but they'd usually be pretty small. For breakfast, I'd have two pieces of toast, peanut butter, jam. Lunch, I would have uh, a very, very small bowl of stir fry, like rice, brown rice, and uh, a lot of veggies, a little bit of chicken. And then dinner, I would, I would eat uh, a lot of veggies, maybe a couple bananas, some toast. 
But um, where I was going with this is that year I I developed a little bit of an issue um, with eating, and I didn't I didn't really quite understand the full extent of what had happened and why my season was was blown because I kind of pulled it together at the end for outdoor. I, I had a decent race. Um, but I think that was more so because I cut back on mileage and just worked with where I was at. But fast forward um, to the next year, and I thought to myself, okay, so at 152 to 155 pounds, which is about what I weighed at the time, I I wasn't cutting it. I wasn't uh, able to to race to the standard that I think I should be. So I thought to myself, maybe I just need to get a little bit skinnier. And these next pictures are the smallest I've ever been in my entire life. Um, looking at them now, what blows my mind is I thought that I, when I looked at myself in the mirror, I thought I was fat. Like I still had room to lose weight, which is a really weird concept to me now because I look at these pictures and I just think, holy fuck, you look gross, man. Like, that's just nuts that that even, that even happened. Um, but... I had a really good summer. I think I ran about 800 miles, 850, and I got down to at the lowest 143 pounds. And my body fat, I never got it tested, but it had to be pretty fucking low because I was shredded to the teeth. Um, you could see every single vein in my body. You could see every tendon in my hands. You could you could see every vein in my forehead. My jawline was sunken. My eyes were sunken. I just didn't. I looked like I was a fucking Auschwitz victim, man. It was bad. And at the beginning of the season, I had some okay races. Um, I think my best race that year was 26.04 at Lacrosse in the 8K, which was a PR. I was happy with that. But after that, I hit the fucking wall hard, 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 hard. I ran out of gas. My body blew up. Conference and regions, those were probably the worst cross-country races I've had probably to this day, at least in college. And thinking back now um, about it, it was entirely food. It's uh, I'd, I didn't fuel my body to recover and get faster. And um, for me, anorexia has always been, it's never been about how I look. Um, per se. It's always been about athleticism and I feel like I can't be a good athlete until I until I lose X amount of weight and I weigh or look like this, blah, you know what I mean? You get the point. And that's what's so dangerous about anorexia and running is if you look at the numbers, I I couldn't tell you them off the top of my head, but I've, I've read on it before. The, the amount of runners that, that struggle with an eating disorder at all is so much higher than other sports. Um, and endurance athletes, the fact that there's a positive correlation between leanness and speed just concretes the fucking thing. It just, it sells it. it uh, because you can't argue with the science. You can't argue with the fact that when you have less body fat, you dissipate heat better. When you have less fat, you're carrying around less weight, therefore your VO2 max increases. You have more power because you have more lean muscle. You can't argue with that 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 knowledge. But you also can't, unless you have a bunch of money and scientists or whatever, you can't uh, you can't measure what your ideal race weight is or or your, what your ideal body fat should be. And that's where I think most collegiate runners especially run into trouble, and that's where I ran into trouble. Um, but that was the worst my, my anorexia ever was. I think at that point I was eating about 800 calories a day. I had the same meal, uh, I had the same food for every single meal. I had two pieces of toast with peanut butter and jam and a banana cut up on top. That was my, my food for every single meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, for, I bet you three months straight. Um, because I knew it was calorically not very dense. It had the perfect blend of macros that I felt I needed as a runner. And I knew I wouldn't gain weight. So I hovered around that mid 140s for a very long time. And I'll, if I haven't already, I'll drop some pictures so you can see um, that I was shredded to the teeth and very unhealthy 
not just physically but mentally food for me was fucking i did not like it i'd get sick just looking at at desserts i think i, I had a streak going i uh, i kept track for a while of how many days i didn't have a fried food or a dessert and that year i went like seven months without touching without touching a sweet or a french fry or a chicken nugget i work at buffalo wild wings man so that was fucking hard <laughs> But, uh, you know, this is a transformation story, so obviously it comes to an end. And the day I realized I had a problem and that I needed to fix this, um, I, I, was, I was going to binge and I bought this 12 pack of donuts. And some of you are gonna think this is so fucking weird, but what I did is I would chew the donuts and I had a garbage bag. And when I finished chewing the donut, I spit the donut back into the garbage bag and I did that with all 12 donuts because I didn't want to get fat but my body was just craving sugar um, and, and calories and I, I, I wanted to taste food again, real food, but without the, the detrimental cost of my athletic performance. And um, I held this bag full of my chewed up fucking donuts and saliva and and gunk and I thought to myself you're fucking pathetic man this has got to end this is this isn't this isn't right this isn't what athletes do you look at the top athletes in the world this is not what they do at least not in my head and that was it I uh, I didn't really talk with anybody about it I just made a mental note that day and I said all right Trey I'm gonna take this picture um, and it's on the the thumbnail but I'll drop it here too I'm gonna take this picture and you're gonna go through a couple months of stuff in your face. And you're gonna go through a couple months of feeling really uncomfortable, of gaining weight, um, of slowing down. I knew inevitably, inevitably that I would slow down, but you're gonna fucking suck it up and you're gonna do it because this is what you need right now. This is what you need if you wanna have longevity in your running career and if you wanna feel like a human being again, so. Um, that indoor season when, when cross country was over, I had those two terrible races at conference and regions. I, uh, I upped my calories a fuck ton. I ate until I was stuffed. And then after I was stuffed, I'd be hungry an hour later and I'd do it again. I think that first week back, I went from 143 pounds to 160. <laughs> I gained, <laughs> if you can imagine that being possible, I gained 17 pounds in a week. Um, and then from there, I, I think the, the most I had weighed that uh, that indoor season after cross country was uh, about 172 pounds. And I spent a, about two months getting up to that. So that first week was a really huge rebound and maybe a lot of that was just shit kind of sitting in my bowels or whatever. But I uh, I was almost 30 pounds heavier at the, at the beginning of indoor season. And I you could tell by my races for sure. I think I opened the season with a 917 3k which is considerably slower and it was it was frustrating i was mad i'm not gonna lie um but as the season went on and i kept fueling my body the way that i needed to um things just kind of came together i started to speed up even though i was 30 pounds heavier i i think at the end of that indoor season i, I ran 1535 which was at the time like seven seconds off of my 5k pr so that was cool um and what was really interesting is I would eat the same amount of food, but I think my body just kind of normalized um, at 3,500, 4,000 calories, and I started to lose weight again, even though I was eating a lot. And that's probably just my metabolism rebounding and kind of correcting the fact that I'd, I uh, had gouged myself for so long just out of pure starvation. But uh, I, I began to get healthy again, and I, I think that time period was the most happy I've been eating um, to the date today. Um, I think I struggle more now than I did back then to be honest. <clears throat> but I I developed a good relationship with food again um, and I did it on my own but I probably looking back now would have it would have been easier if I had depended on some people but I'm a little prideful of a person to be honest. I don't like asking for help um, and I got it done. And I guess the big thing I want to stress here is this all-in mentality um, to recovering from anorexia. I don't think that 
I could have done it any other way. I think if I had chose to, okay, today I'm just gonna eat a little bit more, tomorrow I'll go back to my normal habits. I, I don't think I could have done it any differently. I think uh, if you're struggling with anorexia, first of all, you should reach out for help. Um, don't do what I did, don't, don't feel prideful. Going back, I would have asked for help now. Um, but if you're struggling with anorexia, you should um, just go all in, man, or well, man, <laughs> just buy in. It's uh, it's it's gonna suck, and the way you gotta look at it is to undo the damage of months or years. Um, it's gonna take months or years to to fix. So, yeah, you you fucked up your metabolism for a long time. So to fix it, it's gonna t also take a long time, and that's just something you have to come to. Th to terms with and if, a, if you're an athlete and a season has to suffer so be it if you're in it for the long haul you know what you got to do anyways you might as well fix it now but as uh after that season um i think it's not coincidental that that was that outdoor season following is the best season of my life i ran uh a very solid conference performance um and I'm very thankful that looking back now, I, I chose to do what I did and go all in on, on um, believing in myself and and fixing my eating habits. Because at the end of the day, um, you just have to make the decision yourself. You have to sit down and say to yourself, "You look fucking pathetic right now." You, this is what I said to myself: is you are pathetic. You need to get your shit together and quit fucking pissing around the problem. Because I would just make all these excuses about about my eating habits and try to justify it with the fact that I was racing faster than I was a year ago. Um, blah, 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 blah. And I just realized this is bullshit, man. You're just lying to yourself. And everyone can see it. Everyone around me knew that I was struggling. They just wouldn't say anything to me. And when they did, I was just wouldn't listen. Don't be that guy, man. Um, I'm just kind of rambling at this point, but... If you're gonna pull anything away from this, you just have to go all in. You can't half-ass this kind of thing. You need to you need to just fucking buy in and realize I have a problem. It can be fixed. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. No matter how long the tunnel is, it's gonna be different lengths for different people. There's still an end. Um, you need to just fucking buy in and believe in yourself. Everyone in the world can believe in you, and it doesn't. It doesn't mean shit if you don't believe in yourself first. Um, you need to buy in. That was probably one of the toughest things that I've had to overcome and still struggle with now. It's not going to be something I think I'll ever completely get out of, but I'm definitely a much healthier person than I have been the last four years. Uh, they didn't last. Let me rephrase that. I'm a much healthier person than I was for the two years I really struggled with anorexia. And even though it's hard now, some days I struggle a little bit and I won't eat as much as I should or I kind of relapse. Um, I know that it's for the best and that this is healthy and normal and for the, for the love of uh, all that's good, dude, you are not the only person struggling with it and everyone fucking says it, it's so cliche, but there are so many people that struggle with anorexia or eating disorders or bulimia or whatever the fuck you want to call it. You're not, they don't feel like you're, you're special, but you're not special. That's what our coach always, <laughs> always says. Um, you're not alone. There's so many people. There are millions of people that have gone through exactly what you're going through in any aspect of your life. And to not use your resources or people around you that have gone through that is, is uh, it's just unreasonable. So I guess that's all I've got for the video. Um, I think the last thing I want to kind of drop is the transformation. So the picture, the first picture I took was well, the day that I realized I had a problem was um, on the thumbnail. And right here you can see what I look like right now. Um, I'm a healthy 160 pounds normally. It'll fluctuate up or down three to five, just depending on uh, if I'm doing some army training or if I'm not running a lot or if I'm lifting or X, Y, Z things. But I finally found what's normal for me and for my metabolism and for my body build. Um, and everyone in the world can do the exact same thing. We're all, we're all built the exact same. We are. Our, our, our metabolism fuels our genetic build. And whatever that means for you, you have an ideal build that you can achieve. So um, just believe that you can do it and know that, uh, that you can. Buy into yourself. If you don't have people that buy into you, buy into yourself. That's all I got, though. 
Thanks for listening to my story. Um, if you have any questions or or you're struggling with anorexia or an eating disorder, you can always message me on Instagram. My my page is in the comments, or not in the comments, uh, in the Dropbox or whatever the fuck you want to call that little thing that they pop down on the YouTube video bullshit thing. Um, you can find my Instagram there. Otherwise, I have Snapchat, but you can probably get a hold of me best on Instagram. So both my pages will be there, my running account and my personal account. So I'd love to chat with you. I'd love to hear your story. Um, I'd love to hear if I if I can do anything to help you. So otherwise, um, thanks for stopping in to the channel. Have a good one.